Speeds of over 200 miles per hour. It's the IndyCar. A combination of the perfect pit crew, the perfect mechanic, an engine that's fine-tuned, tires that complement the chassis, in an effort to achieve the perfect suspension. When everything is just right, it's up to the driver to take this sleek machine to speeds and limits it's never been before. For almost the entire month of May, crews and drivers prepare for the greatest race of all, the Indy 500. From a driver's point of view, the time trials of 87 created a month of May they'll never forget. It was a tough month for a lot of people, and, and, and it, was, it was tough, especially because you really couldn't anticipate or predict every moment you were out there, what was going to happen. Turn after turn, drivers found themselves in a nightmare. It was a nightmare because uh, the things that the car did, you didn't know it was coming until it was too late. But as to what was wrong, that was the Indy mystery. Suddenly, the front of the car just loses grip and it heads for the wall, you know, head on. One of those who hit the wall head on, Danny Ungaius. He would be knocked out of the Indy 500. His replacement, Al Unser Sr., would be the Indy 500 winner. A familiar sight was a sleek machine reduced to rubble, with drivers questioning their own ability. It can be a niggling problem the whole month long. It can be very, very frustrating, as we found, when you cannot find the problem. You know, you, you wake up in the morning and you're kind of looking in the mirror saying, is it me? Tom Sneva, a former Indy 500 winner, hit the wall twice last year. As we prepare for the practice runs tomorrow, this champion is still unsure as to what was wrong in 1987 at Indianapolis. We really couldn't put our finger ever on why those two accidents happened uh, during practice in Indianapolis. And that's very much a concern from a driver's standpoint because a lot of times you don't want to admit why the, the accident happened, but in your own mind, you know. Well, in my mind, I'm still not real sure exactly what the problem was at Indianapolis. And uh, that's a tough situation from a driver's standpoint. There were a total of 21 incidents during practice and time trials last May. When Pancho Carter went airborne on the first day of practice, it would set off one of the biggest controversies in the history of the Indy 500. There were three factors that could have caused the problem. It didn't rain during the entire month. That left the track slick from rubber and oil. Goodyear introduced new radial tires, replacing the old bias ply. And the new March chassis did not complement the tires. Goodyear claims there was a chassis aerodynamic problem. In fact, the March chassis manufacturer shoulders a part of the blame. We've probably got caught a little bit with our trousers down, as you've read in the paper several times. I think if you look back over the last 29 races, of which we've won 26, the last time that we really got kicked, kicked in the butt and kicked hard, was Pocono last year. Um, that was the first time the radials had really been used in a 500-mile race, and we were well and truly beaten by Mario. And I think that should have been an indication then that uh, we were in a slight, as we say, in a spot of bother. We couldn't blame it on anything. We couldn't blame it on marks or anything. I think it's just we didn't have the right combination. The drivers have had a full year to analyze and forget the nightmare of May 87. It's May of 88, and a championship driver has but one goal. You know, there are just like um, many uh, golf tournaments out there, but the Masters is the one, and uh, Indianapolis is, uh, is our Masters, is our Super Bowl, and uh, we just got to go for it.